Hey everybody, uh, I got something actually pretty serious to talk about today. Uh, there's some ridiculous rumors being spread about me right now. People are saying that I'm balding. Me, balding. Real quick, just to prove the haters wrong, I've got an everyday comb, same one you can buy at the store, and I'm just gonna run it through my hair and you tell me, could a balding person do this? <laughs> you know, I don't need to prove myself to you. All right, fine. It's true. Yes, my, all right, chill. Yes, my hair is running out. These days, the old hairline is looking a little more Yoda than Yaddle. A little less Mike Shinoda and a little more Master Yoda. You know, a little less Fabio, a little more Yoda from Star Wars. And yes, commenters are mean to me about it. Or rather, some people are mean about it and some people just point it out and either way, it hurts my feelings. Look at this comment. Really funny video, haven't laughed this hard in a while. You are balding. What these commenters may not realize is that I know I'm balding, but my main hesitance to let it go and just shave my head is I don't know if that decision would be for me. Whether it's a move of self-confidence or a move of fear being made just to give commenters one less weak point to zero in on. This isn't a decision I wanna make for somebody else. But I have other concerns too. I don't know if you've noticed this, but there only ever seems to be one bald person in any given social situation. So what, now I'm gonna be the second bald person? What if it causes the first bald person to become irritable and attack me? Or is it gonna make me like a niche creator? Am I only gonna be able to talk about no hair content like Black Adam or In Time? I wouldn't have burned that Master of Disguise video so early. <laughs> Welcome back to Balding Ideas. Today, we're gonna talk about Hollywood's bald villain trope. It's an all too common technique where the antagonist of a story is given a bald head in an attempt to disconnect them from everything that makes us human. Don't believe me? What about Lex Luthor, Heisenberg, Voldemort, or Joe Rogan, just to name a few. Joe Ro no, no, Joe Rogan is from Bright on Netflix. He's the orc with the talk show. Next time on the channel, episode two of Bald Legends, Darth Vader. Bald beneath the helmet and with one heroic redemption arc. Could he be our second bald legend after the red M&M? Whoa, hold on. Is my last name like a Star Wars thing? I have shaved my head before. There were a good few years there where instead of getting haircuts, I would just shave it all off. And that was something I really enjoyed. There were a lot of benefits to that. No one could tell if I hadn't showered. That I guess came up the most. I also shaved it whenever we did new episodes of Hitman, a series where I would get high and think that I was Hitman. But I haven't shaved it in a long time because now I'm scared that it's not gonna grow back. That leaving my hair like this is the most hair I'm ever gonna have. I guess this is where I admit that I do wish I had hair. That's a factor in this decision. I used to have hair. Curls that I never appreciated enough, that I hated because they got all gross and tangled because I was too lazy to wash them before school. After a certain age, I just started cutting my hair short because I was so embarrassed of those bouncy golden brown locks. Young me had no appreciation for what he had. I'm sorry, you're gonna, what? I'm gonna put a picture of me as a kid on a balloon and I'm gonna pop it as a punishment for young me for not appreciating my hair enough. Why? <laughs> it's deep. Yeah, but I I'm just wondering how you want your audience to feel once you pop that balloon. I kind of want him to go like, damn. You know, he's really mad at his past self. That's so sad. Do you, have, uh, do you have many regrets about your childhood? Yeah, nice try. I just want to know if the idea is good or not. I just I just don't think it's going to make a lot of sense to people that are, you know, watching that. <laughs> okay, but hold on. Why am I paying you to be mean to me? I'm noticing there might be some transference between me and your schoolyard bullies. I recall you would say that to them. So what? It worked. They'd say, yeah, you don't have to give us your money, Leo. Because we also accept wedgies. Whatever, I'm doing the balloon thing. Why didn't he warn me? It'd be so loud. Point being, I'm not quite ready to let go of my hair. This past summer, in an effort for a more bountiful harvest, I subscribed to Keeps with promo code DISMISSED20. It's from a Judge Judy rewatch podcast. It's an online subscription service that offers hair restoration treatment delivered monthly. And the thing is, over a month into using Keeps, it actually was working. My hair was filling out. It's not fully there, but noticeably well on its way. 
But the thing people warn you about with finasteride, one of the chemicals they prescribed me, is its potential to increase feelings of depression. So I kept a close eye on that. Until one day I lost a level of Beat Saber, and I didn't get angry, I just felt like a loser. And when I went to take a mood resetting shower, alone with my thoughts, I collapsed. My thoughts spiraled out to each separate area of my life I was a failure in until I was sobbing into my arms about how I don't deserve any of the good things I have. This wasn't me, this was a nasty chemical reaction. And there's no way getting some hair back was worth feeling like that. Before we continue, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Keeps. Keeps is an online subscription serp- Ah, dang it! And I'm sure the comments of this video will be full of well-meaning alternatives for how to get my hair back. Like, hey, get a hair transplant, or rub a derma roller on your head, or hey, there's this alternative chemical to finasteride, and instead of depression, it only gives you the whooping cough. That's back now. They're bringing that back. But to be honest, I would so much rather care less how I look than sink more money into changing it. Because obviously going bald isn't losing. I hate the idea that I'm even possibly perpetuating that by making this video. That's not the bad ending of this hair journey, and I'd never tell a friend that it was. And I like to think that my fellow male pattern bald heads see my work and feel seen. Maybe even get inspired by my refusal to wear hats. So even if someone comments with a free hair growth solution that has a 100% chance of working, you know, just crack a raw egg over your head every morning. Just sleep upside down like a bat so your hair falls down out of the follicles. Doing it would feel like I'm saying that yes, going bald is losing. And whatever ideals I have of being above that, I've now taken an action out of shame that reveals how I really think. Although people aren't exactly commenting shame on you, Leo, for being bald. They want me to shave bald. What they seem to hate is seeing my in-between, soon-to-be bald hairline for whatever reason they're convinced is my problem and not theirs. But I've always hated these standards of beauty and the way we voluntarily enforce them on each other. God forbid people look how people look. What do you need me to be hot for? So you can kiss me? So sure, it's not incongruous to my values to just sit back, not worry about it, and let my hair continue to fizzle out over time. But... Wouldn't you rather give it all at once? something real, then carve off useless pieces till there's nothing left. Yeah, I guess the one thing I can't get over is that it truly hurts that shaving at this point would be answering all the mean comments I've gotten about it with, you're right to comment that, thanks for the advice. When I don't agree with that at all. You shouldn't have commented that. I'm self-conscious about it. You think I look at my receding hairline with a big smile on my face and joy in my heart, and what I need is some random fucko loser who sucks to tell me to shave it? And I know that hearing all this, you're gonna say, my, your hair isn't that bad, Leo. We love your hair the way it is, right? That's what you're gonna comment, right? What I'm noticing now is that for all this talk about not wanting to care about the comments, I'm speculating a lot on what this video's comments will be. I have to admit that searching through the comments for people calling me bald, the biggest surprise was I could only find like 15. I steeled myself hard for that search because in my recollection I'd received hundreds. Clearly the fear of them impacts me more than the reality of them. So there are emotions getting in the way here. And I think to figure this out, we're gonna have to take the emotions and external inputs out of it and be as logical as possible with a list of pros and cons for shaving bald. Pro, I wouldn't get any more mean comments about it. Okay, that's actually an example of an external input. Um, con, instead of saying balding bitch, commenters might just say fully bald bitch. Okay, that's an external input too. We're gonna go with an objective list. Con, head's gonna be a little colder. Pro, no hair might make my head look smaller, which is hot. There's no one hotter than the Earthworm Jim. Con, less protection against meteors. Pro, wouldn't have to style or shampoo my hair anymore. That's nice. Con, there might be some fucked up bad skin under there. The glimpses I've gotten lately are not promising. Pro, if I paint myself green, that's an instant Shrek costume for Halloween. Or the mask, or I could be Mike Wazowski, or Kermit, or the Ninja Turtles. Why are so many green characters bald? The Mucinex Man. Con, less skull protection in combat. A pro, no one can pull my hair in combat. Con, though, being the second bald person at a social event may create more opportunities for combat. Pro, the carpet would finally match the drapes. Con, you're gonna get my ass absolutely handed to me in rap battles. So much rhymes with bald. You look like Glenn, Glenn Greenwald. <laughs> the list goes on. Pro, baby diaper role play is more immersive. 
con? Hard to know where my face ends. Pro, after I shave it off, I could donate it to Locks of Love. Or I guess, do they have a clumps of ennui? Okay, and they're perfectly tied, so. I guess we can't avoid getting into the emotionality of this before I make my final decision. The truth is, when I used to shave my head, I tended to do it at moments of transition in my life. Starting a new job, ending a romantic relationship. It felt like in a tumultuous time, I was giving myself one less thing to worry about. Letting myself feel like I had power over my situation when things seemed up in the air. This is something you hairheads would never understand. And I'm so proud that I used to shave my head for bits like Hitman, even if all that went into the decision at the time was, I'm gonna make myself look goofy for a joke. I'm proud of that Leo because he shaved his head fearlessly and for reasons that made him happy. But now I'm afraid of shaving it because it won't grow back? If I'm gonna keep my hair, leave it how it is, I really need to know I'm not doing it out of stubbornness or pettiness. I need to know I'm happy with it. It's certainly a decision that aligns with my values. Fuck this razor thin margin of what we consider beautiful. Fuck there being a type of hair that you're supposed to take medicine to fix. Fuck letting rude people trick me into caring about something that has no impact on what I put out into the world. And fuck not being happy with the way I look. I could live the whole rest of my life telling myself I'm still not cute enough, or I could just believe the wonderful people who tell me I am. So yeah, my thinning hair is distinct. It's me, I'm simply a type of guy. And I do believe in my heart of hearts that there's nothing wrong with that. Am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? Transporter and I'm Obson Shaw. In it.